Welcome. This video is going to be a quick review of solid state AC relay circuits, which are going to be based on triax and SCRs. This is your host, Lewis Laughlin. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Your AC relays generally uses a photo triac LED setup. Very simple. There are some of these optocouplers that will drive a small, say, 24 volt AC panel lamp, but most are very low power and instead are often used to turn on and drive higher powered regular triacs or SCRs. Being that the triacs or SCRs, as the optical device detectors, we're limited only to AC because once these devices are turned on and you have DC they will never turn off unless you break the power connection to the DC circuit. Not very useful. Here is a sample of a solid state relay that you can build. The triac circuit is rather common. We are taking the trigger, the trigger voltage and current from the A2 side to supply enough gate current to turn this on from A1 to A2. Let's note our input circuit. Instead of being just 5 volts, we have a range now from 5 to 30 volts. How do we do that? We have a 220 ohm 2 watt resistor. D1, which is just a standard silicon diode, is a is polarity protection. If you uh, connect the polarity backwards, the current will be shunted through the diode and it will protect the optocoupler. As you increase the input voltage, more and more current will go through your LED emitter in the optocoupler and it will move through R5, a 47 ohm resistor. As the current increases, the voltage drop across the base emitter junction of an NPN silicon transistor will gradually switch it on. At higher voltages, which means higher current, the voltage on the base will rise and the current will be shunted through the collector emitter junction of the transistor instead of overheating and destroying the input of the optocoupler itself. So this is how you can get yourself a range from 5 to 30 volts. Common ranges that are used on these solid state relays in industry are often 24 volts or 12 volts. 24 volts is feather, fairly common. Here is another type of optocoupler. It's a TIP3063. Unlike the, what we had here, which was an MOC3020 with just a plain old photo triac, the TIP3063 has your photo triac, but it has internal zero crossing circuitry. Why would I want zero crossing circuitry? Let's just take, for example, you switch on power to a light bulb or any other source. When it first starts up, the resistance is extremely low and you create a huge surge. With this circuit, if you just switched it on, you're more likely to uh, possibly blow out the light bulb because you might be applying the full, uh, if this is 120 volts AC in, you might end up applying the full 170 volts to a few, few ohms on a cold light bulb filament and pop this prevents this by cutting on sort of on the low side and then allowing it to come up. So these are good to have. You can wire this into this circuit. Does the same. Everything else would be pretty much identical. This is another optocoupler, MOC3031 and others listed here that also have internal zero crossing circuitry. If you're, if you're going to use a, to build a solid state AC relay that you just want to switch the power on and off, I would go with these. If you're going to try to phase control 
the triac, you need to go with this. That is, if you're trying to control the brightness of a light bulb or a speed of a motor, you need to use this type optocoupler. If you're just cutting lights on and off, these two will work fine and, in fact, are preferred. To reiterate, a zero crossing circuit assures the triac switches on at, say, 10 degrees, not 90 degrees where it's a peak voltage. This prevents surge damage to the load, but they can't be used with AC phase control circuits such as my Arduino circuits that control the intensity of loads such as a light bulb. Can't use these. <coughs> Excuse me. And here again is your triac with an optocoupler, whichever one you're using. Note, once again, uh, this would be the T2 terminal. That's where you get the volt current for your gate. Also note you need a snubber circuit if this is a magnetic load, being motors, relays, transformers, because of voltage spikes and inductive feedback, this will protect the uh, gate from false firing. Here are some pictures of some uh, what these solid-state AC relays look like. They come in sealed units. They pretty well have inputs. You have inputs here and you have outputs there. These are rather big. You don't put them on a circuit board but they're really inexpensive. The prices come down on them quite a bit. You might just want to buy a few. You will find these all over industry if you do any industrial electronics, so get used to them. All right, here's an optocoupler that uses an SCR, a photo SCR, as opposed to a photo triac. These can be used with switching on SCR circuits. You can use this to uh, light up a, oh, let's say a 25 uh, a 24 volt AC panel lamp, but it will act like a half wave rectifier when you turn it on. So you might want to use the other optocouplers, the AC type with the photo triac, or else you'll have a turn on and off half wave diode. Here's another. This is, shows how this works, and this is a panel lamp that is connected here. Here's the voltages that you can apply, but you got to remember these are low power, so uh, you won't, you're not going to white light a hundred watt light bulb with this. And there's better ways to go than this, and we'll study that when we get into solid state AC DC relays in another video. You can also use this through a diode bridge to trip on a regular AC triac. I thought I'd just show you that. That was in the spec sheets. You turn this on, uh, current flows for the full 360 degrees through one diode or the other, turns on the triac, and you power up your load. Okay, so that's a quick review of solid state AC relays. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com and check out the other videos that I will link that are related to this. Thanks for watching.